start typical start game lag. Come on, come on. Oh, it's not a major keeper, are we? It'd be easier to do, wouldn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another casting series on Esoc TV. My name is Harrison. Today we are joined in the quarterfinals of the Hidden Cup 2. That's right, we've gone past the qualifier stages and we're actually now into the main event with our hidden protagonists. Today's series is between Major Cooper and Elaine Magnan. I have no idea who these players are. These could be any players from the top eight we've seen. Uh, if, you haven't, if you don't know who the players are, check them out on the forums. Our first series, our first game of the best of five series between two players is played on Grand Chaco. We see Major Cooper here playing as the Indians spawning to the north in the map Gala Red. Picking up some llamas. Walking away from Walter Smith. And that's the name of the explorer here from Elaine Magnum's British Civilization. Now, there's no point trying to guess who these players are called from the explorer names. Uh -huh. These are new, fresh accounts given to the players, sponsored by Microsoft here, I believe. So, no cheeky looking at the explorer going, oh, that Indian explorer, that's the name there of uh, Mito's explorer. Or look at the French and British explorer, go, oh, that's Kai's kind of explorer. Ain't gonna happen. I uh, use those players because, um, well, they're not part of the tournament, so it's been unbiased. But uh, this is the type of level of the gameplay that we're expecting to see. Really, really great gameplay. All these players have gone through either one or um, participated in two qualification series to get here. And we have seen some outstanding gameplay from so far. But the thing is, I'm trying to pad this out because when it's Hidden Cup, I don't know who I'm watching. So I can't really say, oh, yes. This player here had an excellent series in the qualifiers and defeat this person by this great build order because I, my man, this could be this could be Kinesi. We could be seeing five layer, eight layer, twenty layer British walled gameplay backed by longbows across the entire Grand Shaco. We could be seeing Ungus going skirm goon botting Zambrak Gurkha. We could be having Izad going. Sepoy Yurumi's. I've got no idea who we're playing, no idea who I'm watching, no idea like how to guess how they're going to play this. I can only say what I see on the screen, and so far we're in the first stage, and um, business as usual. Right. This map having a two ponds with two llamas spawning twice on both sides, so both players having access to good llamas. Six have been picked up by the Indians. Two being picked up by the British, being eaten very, very fast here. Let's check that out. Elaine Magnum here, aging up with a 17 villager age up on two manor houses, clicking up at 253. Should be up by about 410. Just a classic standard fast age up to the second age with great tempo there from the Brits. The Indians, meanwhile, scouting around with both explorers, not really splitting them up. I think he's happy uh, with his map vision so far and just working on some treasures. Going for a bit of gold here. Maybe that's some market treasures. Uh, Markitex in transition. He is throwing down an in-base Carly Martyr. Interesting to note, he does have one starting hunt nearby. He does have the berries in the range. Mine, quite a lot of trees. Second hunt being pushed in. Nice placement of the Carly Martyr, actually. Well thought out there. Um, but unfortunately, he doesn't actually see the second mine, so you could argue having the Carly Martyr here would have been even better for these trees, maybe back trees and the mine. But that doesn't overly matter too much. Looking at... Our Indian players' deck quickly. Line of the deck. Distributism. CM in age one. Age two, we have Rajputs as well, making a rare appearance. Double camel card. Dravidian martial arts available. Can't think of the card which is usually in place instead of five Rajputs and not being there. Maybe just a 600 wood or a 600 gold. I can't quite think of what it would be. Might be 700 food. Sounds a bit off. It comes to me that the classic carver are missing, but uh, I don't expect to see five Rajputs here versus Brits. That doesn't sound like a good idea. But we do obviously have our... Uh, we, we, don't, we don't have infinite Yurimis in age 4. We have 10 Yurimi Regiment and 2 Rockets as well. Mysorian Rockets backed by 14 Sepoys. So it looks to be a basically a Sepoy Yurimi combination. And uh-oh, wall alert, wall alert. Our first wall being thrown down here by Elaine Magnum. But it is in front of one hunt, two hunt. There's a third over here, so a lot of hunt being controlled so far by a British player. Slightly forward uh, town centre. I think this is actually a double hunt. Yeah, it's a double hunt. Quite nice. Defensive barracks in base. Uh, 
We've got people here throwing random accusations of who the players are. I've seen Julian, I've seen Izad, I've seen Kinesi, I've seen everybody. I'm making up. I've only seen Rosado just say it's um, Julian Izad. Radovan says it's Kinesi Izad possibly. I think I think this Indian play is throwing people off completely. People thinking, oh, someone's playing India. It has to be Izad. One billion quadrillion zillion percent. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Chap chat. <laughs> Someone's interrogating, right. <laughs> Final list of players who send 700 billion 300 export. Go, go, go. Um, there you, you have to ask the community later on who they think that is, because I don't know. I don't I don't think there's enough evidence to say one or the other who this is gonna be, but what I know is that Major Cooper here just picking up himself 120 gold. Very, very nice. Market tech is down. Most of the techs are starting to be researched here. Saving up for Imperial Bureaucracy, likely to be the next card coming from Tech B Research. Very readily available on the 700 wood. Defensive consulate, barracks defensive in base. It's very interesting going Carney Boom versus Brit play. I think taking it late game, you kind of rely on your stronger units like your Siege Elephants, your Yumi Swordsman, Honored Sepoys, a Gurkhas because they're pretty strong as well. But uh, allowing Elaine Magnum here for a somewhat free house boom behind although the boom is not super big at the moment he's gone he's gone five vil first now into 700 wood he's got pioneers in deck and exotic hardwoods siege longbows and four hanover allies <laughs> right is this going to be some sort of wall longbow boosted by hanover drummers out of range of all the indian units boosting the drummers this could be some Arthur Shithouse shenanigans incoming here. I'm excited to see how this game progresses. Aries saying this is too standard here for Ace. You know what? Ace can play standard. He's got a very wide strategy and knowledge pool, but he does know how to utilize um, his strategies when he needs to, to call out the uh, standard build orders. Major Cooper here defending with 15. 15 sepoys, maybe a little bit more than 15. Here come the three room lots here from the consulate. We've got an Ottoman consulate. There's no reason to go any other consulate at the moment than the Ottomans. It's incredible. Buffs to the Hussars, a buff to the Minutemen, and the settlers are strong as well. The line of sight you get from the consulate is huge at the same time as well. So great play. And Elaine's Magnums and Musketeers are going to get somewhat caught out. A bit of a trade here. The room lots are going to pull back the Musketeers. Sepoys have just dealt with the Explorer, but there's still the prize of eight Musketeers up for grabs here. Magnum moving forward to try and get down there. Some longbows. The, the elephants in the room lots might just go dive in, but uh, two cavalry gone down. Elephants pretty tanky, but uh, longbows are good stand delivering. I think there's an opportunity there for Major Cooper to dive in there and get some good kills at a, at a good exchange, but uh, he declines the trade and decides to return back. Both players happily booming behind. India going for you know, relatively quite a fast age up to the next stage. Going to age up with Charmanar Gate. So that's going to be our Mahout Lancer and ability to train Mantadar units. Meanwhile, our Brit player, Gold, is on the floor. He's also looking to age up soon behind. But uh, it's quite far off, actually. He has trained a few more units than he's ideally wanted. Definitely an extra batch of five Musketeers yes. being trained when um, Elaine didn't necessarily want to, but I did, he did scout out the amount of sepoys there, so he kind of felt like he had to do something pretty quickly. Uh, remember, the Brits, they don't have access to a fast age politician, where the uh, Indians, they kind of do. Um, just bang villages onto the wand until it's built, but uh, Major Cooper here only, only opting to build with four, which is the most efficient way, but uh, when Major Cooper's got a shipment stacked... I probably, probably want to bang a few more on there and try and get this up as fast as possible. Uh, we do note there are no economy shipments, economic shipments in the next stage. It's just units, units, and, and one singular text. So no wood, no gold. First card likely to be. It could honestly be intervention for four room lots. That, the cab are that strong at the moment. They are very, very, very good. Potential for just open it with nine sepoys, going vet sepoy, just having a massive, really strong Indian heavy infantry and playing from there. Just getting a nice solid base to play from. We'll have to find out. Uh, more hunts being controlled. We do see the longbows and musks keeping this uh, single villager nice and company. Great coats have been researched for her, so she's going to be very well protected 
which is always good to see. So uh, we we can rule out that half the about ninety five percent of the player base is not playing at the moment because this person has researched their great coats. And the games are steadily ticking on as we go into the tenth minute. Nine sepoys. Is that Mantabdar? Yeah, Mantabdar sepoy being trained, disciplined sepoys. Intervention behind on the Ottoman consulate. Has the ability here to go for settlers, but maybe actually waiting for the Ottoman expeditionary company for another batch of cavalry. You can see this This is just musk, musk hus on absolute steroids here from India. Disciplined sepoys with Mantabdar support, and then Roomlot Hussars coming from behind. Might actually need to buff the concert export rate to 10% just to try and get the export much faster. So that's sacrifice 10% of your eco, or your Virgil eco, let's say, and gather export 65% faster. So if you need that power spike, that's how you get the export in much faster. Oh, Risotto is, is really working hard on the number crunch in here. He's thinking who likes to keep the... Um, Export behind for Cav. I think it's interesting to note no villagers were shipped this game here from India, which I, I'm not going to say is a mistake, but it feels that feels like the logical solution to do is kind of if you're going to let Brit boom, then also match the boom yourself. An extra four things going well. Diving in before intervention, Huss on the field, room extra Cav on the field as well. This is kind of asking for a bit of issues, but I think he's just trying to dive in before the Brits have got their veteran techs. Elaine Magnum in the Fortress Edge, going for Vet Longbow. Falcon is being sent behind. Roomlot flank from behind is going to be very, very strong to deal with. Can't go Falcon from the outpost. We'll have to go to Town Centre, but the Roomlots are diving in behind. He's pretty much got all shipping points covered. He's just going for Vils, but he don't want Vils. He needs to get... Oh! Falcon has shipped forward. This is big. This is big, and the, the Sepoys are running for it. Pushing before the cavalry is turned up, and... India is running away. Good defense there from Elaine Magnum. War is working out really nicely. Cavalry at the back, though, will be a bit annoying here to deal with. Great coats are working out very, very nicely, but we will be seeing some villager kills going down. 44 vills here for Elaine Magnum. Meanwhile, our Indian friend is at 39 villagers, but with distribution um, trickles and probably slightly better market tech. So, all in all, we're about even. And obviously, the export as well. Potentially, Indian eco is slightly ahead, but. Uh, Brits have already got more mass and score on the field already established. Yes, these are the Delis. So the Delis Royal Guard Upgrade is called the Rumor Lot. So it's Delis Guard Upgrade plus 10% combat stats. But uh, for here, it's veteran, com it's veteran units with 10% combat bonus on top because they're a royal unit. They're a consulate unit, let's say. It's the equivalent of when China sends redcoats in age two. Obviously, they're not age four British redcoats, but they're just, they're just called redcoat units. We're training. In, we're switching into Gurkhas now here for our Indian friend. Mount of Dark Gurkha on the field as well. Some pure infantry composition here, and uh, our game's lagging a little bit, but now we're back onto full speed. CJ is out in the field now to deal with the Falconets. I think. Major Cooper realizes there's no point exchanging any more sepoys while well. he can just pick the Falconets off for relatively free. But Elaine Magnum does have longbows, and with Yeomanry potentially thinking about being sent at some point, can, can deal with this very strong. Well, here comes the Hanover allies. I don't, I do not believe, I do not believe the drummers effect stack. They might stack for speed, but I don't think they stack for attack or attack speed. We'll find us out. So, Longbow, 19, 26, 1.5. Out come the drummers. And we're now at 19, 26, 1.35 with a speed of 4.4. So, it's a 10% faster firing, 10% speed. So, one drummer is equivalent to the other, but they're pretty nice. And there's so much boost, but where are the muscles going? The room is going down to the south. The CJs do pick up the Falconets, but actually... With the Hanover allies and veteran longbows support, I don't think he really minds losing the Falcons too much. There's a lot of damage here, and they attack so fast. Just stand and deliver, and that's what's going on. I'm just seeing plus 12s everywhere. And the Musketeers haven't actually really dived in. A couple of villas here going for some uh, hunting, but the rumor's going to be a tasty raid. A tasty raid on the southern side. Must have been pulled off to, to deal with this. Here's a raid on the left side as well. That's just Cav on houses. 
but Longbow still is doing some massive damage. 23 remaining. The Seapoint Mass and the Gurkha Mass have gone, and the Cab have been somewhat cleaned up by the Musks, but although the forces have gone down, we need to check the economies of where players are, because I think there's a lot of bills there uh, being picked up from India's point of view. It's, it's pretty nice, I would say, I would argue. 36 villagers here for our Brit player. Our Indian player, Major Cooper, is currently on a little bit higher. 48, so starting to break away and extends that economic advantage. Diving in, sacrificing military for economic gains. Now all India needs to do is play for time, buy time. It's just we train lots of sepoys. Going for another mount with that sepoy behind, shipping in the Gurkhas. And it's up to Brits to do something special here and push out. I think that is the order of the day. Let's ride with the drummers. We can hear that them giving morale to our friends. It's quite quiet, actually. God, just look how fast these boys run. <laughs> look at him walk. He's, he's gliding. He's gliding across the battlefield. So elegant. Another ville going down. Uh, town centre being built by a villager. Oh, that's that. A single ville is not what you really want. You need to be built with more for any chance to go up at a reasonable time. But more villagers come across to build it. 50 villes here for Major Cooper. Elaine Magnum, 42. Doesn't have any potential here for manor houses to increase population. Sea jellies are still being kept alive, let's say. Gurkha's trying to work on the longbows. And yeah, the husks are just running around. And Lane hasn't got the momentum or mobility to catch up with uh, Rumla and Hussars running around the battlefield. The sepoys are starting to get trashed by the longbows, but the Gurkhas are somewhat unchallenged. They can train nicely with the longbows, but uh, overall. Elaine Magnum feels like he needs to start moving into Longbow and Dragoon play behind. Continuing the Musketeer is not going to work because at some point we'll see some Yurumi Swordsmen from India as well. And that's just going to be devastating if the Yurumi Swordsmen get onto the Musketeers and get a clean connection. And it's one of those... You, you, you can certainly... If you kill the Yurumi shipman, you're not exactly going to win the game. But you can certainly lose the game very quickly if you, you let a Yurumi Swordsman Regiment make contact with your army. So you've got to be very careful with that situation. Yeah, I think Julian K here for Brit could be uh, a, a bit of a bit of a good call. The Hanover allies, a little bit of different um, new technology coming into the game here with the Brit players. And Julian likes to keep up with his Age Empires through theory. So that is potential. I, I, I do see that. I do understand that call. I haven't seen Siege Archery yet, but we have now seen Yeomanry being sent behind. More longbows being trained. Ah, the economy here for Brits is actually really poor. It's not where we need it to be. We're just hoping for a bit more. I bet you he hasn't got Log Flume. Oh, he does have Log Flume. I'm, I'm mistaken. He's got Gangsaw Log Flume Wood, which is yeah, pretty decent. More longbows do come out. Ah, he hasn't got Longbow Shipment. Oh, he hasn't got 10 longbows. I suppose you can't have every unit, single unit shipment. Maybe, um, maybe Seas Archery is not the play here. This, this is a time where the next shipment comes in. You just want longbows. You just want as much range infantry as possible. Big Ray, topside, Hussars on top of villagers. Getting picked off here. They do have their great coats, but no British bonus. But the room lot's cutting through the Hussars yes. pretty cleanly. Uh, Pikes being called from the town centre. A lot of bills going down here, so for a good raid there by Elaine. But the push into Brit players' base, Major Cooper storming through the walls. We do see a couple of Mahouts popping through. Three on the battlefield. A couple more sepoys coming through, but they're getting powered by their own units. Dragbox! Dragbox, Micro! Dragbox, get him to the front! Not seen any uh, real hotkey control here uh, from Major Cooper. Well, maybe it's hotkeys. Maybe that's what it is, but uh, the uh, Mahouts have kind of been there tanking but not a lot of damage to be fair you'd hope for a little bit more but it's the power of the Gurkhas behind and the sepoys having so much HP just tanking up the damage the drummers are helping but there's just not enough longbows on the field it needed more um, now that back man who's getting on top so many villages going down the British economy in tatters quite like in real life at the moment as well and the Indians are becoming the new powerhouse and I think that's a GG being called my game has momentary pause I think I think it's safe to say. I've kind of switched to my... Yes, Elaine Magnum has resigned. I think I've changed player perspective as the game was called at that moment. Yes, the out has been declared. I'm currently stuck on Mother Nature's screen, I believe. So, uh, <laughs> unfortunate way to end. But uh, uh, Major Cooper here...
pushing through and getting our first victory. Well played there by the Major, showing that his rank is truly Major rank plus. If we remember our uh, Tad ranks, please let the uh, named ranks come back. Edo just doesn't quite hit the same mark. Minute drummers are interesting. They're quite nice. Um, with four of them and the speed, like it's not like the uh, bonus is like to go away, but essentially it's ten percent speed, ten percent fire rate, which is not the biggest. It's not the biggest bonus for the units, to be honest. It's it's nice, but it's not like a fifteen percent combat card or a. It's not as good as yeomanry, you could say. Um, no cab combat though. No other play. I suppose it's, it's the only kind of attack buffing card that Longbows have, and that's what the Brit player really needed to mass more of versus the Indian player. And especially because uh, there's no real uh, skirmishes on the field to do with the Sepoy, so there's no counter infantry rifling style units that the British player could have, except for for the um, riflemen. Uh, what, I, what they, what, I forgot actually what they're called, but the um, uh, light infantry units that can get, get changed from the Longbows into the rifles. They can actually count infantry, but um, I haven't actually used them in play yet. I think they really struggle hard versus Gurkha, so it's quite hard to tech into those units instead. But yeah, post game. Ah. Hello. Oh, that's very nice. My dad was asking if I wanted tea or not. I'll have it later. Yeah, feel like I'm pretty good. You can see how the, the Brit player had the veal economy, but uh, India and keeping train units as during the age up was very nice as well. But into the third age, the, the, the veal lead never really increased too much. Um, Major Cooper was pushing in as the age up came in, so... The training was a bit curtailed, but uh, certainly diving the cab into the back ranks was damaging at best and game w and well game winning at best and damaging at worst. Let's say Indian economy is certainly becoming stronger and the quality of the Indian troops as well carrying that game to victory. Very good game in the end. And you can see the economy is ticking away. There's no real way for the Brit player to come back in that situation. Maybe uh, defensive Carney is the way to play into these days, considering the Carney buff foot. The villagers had it in the latest patch. Some said it was unjustified. I do think it's pretty strong, the, the Carney buff in H2, and uh, that's worked out very, very nicely there. So we'll, we'll move on into the next game very much so. Come on. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Major gets his first victory. Right, next game. Blaine Magnum playing as the French. And Major Cooper here playing as the Brits again. Oh, he's playing Brits as well. Ah, very nice. Right, I've been told we've got a special announcement to come at the end of this stream. I'm looking forward to it. It sounds pretty, pretty good. So we'll find out what it's going to be. Right, let's uh, move on to the next game. Feels weird hopping to the end of an Age of Empires 2 song there. I was like, what the hell? What's, where's this one come from? Right, let's move on to the next game. I've got it all ready to go. These are live casts, by the way. These are live casts, so we're going to hop into game number two. I'll see you in there. Hey, hey, no, no, no none of that, boys. No, no, we're not going to have any English football jokes in this chat. This is a strictly Age Empires 3 chat, and anybody dissing the English football team will be receiving moderator actions. Mark my words. I'm, I'm watching you, Animus. And I'm watching you, Funny Treaty. Yeah. 
Right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back into game number two at Lane Magnum, playing as the French spoils to the northwest of the map, Dakota, in the color blue. Major Cooper here playing as the British spoils to the southeast in the color red. Going for a market opening here. Must have picked up some coin treasure in base. But we're still chopping, so maybe it wasn't the full 50 gold or whack that the beaver treasure offered. Might be a little bit of less income. Explorer has come across season 85 wood treasure. That's very, very nice. Elaine Magnum actually might see us with his native scout, but uh, he's going to decline to uh, intervene and try and punch down Francis Cabot and starts scouting around the map. We do see uh, one settlement, two settlements taken. Oh, is this an uh, is this a very early, really early native play? It might be. I don't think it would. Be. I don't think it's anything special to go get in line of sight of natives this this early. But uh, we we certainly know Julian loves his natives play. Last time he played French on Dakota, so I'll be looking out for that in terms of strategy if he may want to go for that. The wood being picked up here for Brits on the other side. Very, very nice as well. Coming across a 90 food treasure by two wolves. Other big treasure up here. 75 wood. Lovely. That's um, going to nearly be a veiled treasure there for the British player. On top of those two wood treasures so far. Meanwhile, the French players run past the three sheep. But we'll find a treasure of 100 food. Looking pretty good. Similar saying, literally every French on this map goes for natives. Uh, I, tend, I, I disagree. I mean, the natives have their place. Um, certainly, uh, Julian has been championing the Cheyenne, saying that they are too strong at the moment. They used to be cheaper on the food and ex more expensive on the wood. So, I think these units have been tinkered in the way that just encourage people, more people to use them. But now they're actually being used, especially with the um, bonuses versus all the cavalry. The fact that this is a you know, a hackapel unit in hackapelite unit in design where they have bonuses versus all cavalry, not just heavy cavalry. It actually pushes this um, cavalry unit into the next tier of goodness. It's, it's a good unit. I think the biggest problem here for um, French natives and French balancing is they have a lot of native cards, and we do see a deck full of native cards. But the the problem here for balancing is we've got we've got one, we've got two, we've got three, we've got four. We've got five, potentially, yeah, we've got six, yeah. We've got six cards in this deck which buff the Cheyenne Rider. There's six cards which buff that unit. Now, apart from that, we have one, two, three, uh, four units which buff five shipments, you can argue, which buff the um, the Cree. So it has has that thing. Our first train bus has been taken to confirm our native play. Obviously, the deck behind us... Really encourages native players well. Our French player sneaking on 75 wood treasure. Major Cooper losing his explorer. The tournament level game is not exactly how you want this to play, but uh, sometimes we have to make do with that. Going for a Cheyenne and going for a Creep. Notice the Cheyenne being taken on the Brit player side. I think he wants to secure this as a crucial shipment, and we're going to see full native play behind. I know that Animus at the moment is frothing at the lips with the ability to watch some native play. I'm sure Evolution is going to be enjoying this game as well. Both players have been championing native play behind. Already having Hunter Dogs. Already having Gangsaw. Waiting for Log Flame to come from behind. Quite expensive tech. A French player may get that on 700 gold shipment being sent behind. But you can kind of see how it's going to be played. Native Treaty is card number one for a nice immediate military spike of cavalry and skirms putting the pressure on major cooper one mana house going forwards and yeah the thing is if, if you're playing brit now and you just see double native tp you're thinking right can't go cav now i'm in age two better drop down that tower better drop down that barracks and uh play from behind i think very important to wall up the front now that we've got all the hunts on our side i think it's very important to kind of Make sure it's raising the busy here from the cavalry player of France and be really tough. And um, yeah, although you know you've got Crete, it is an eco ship, eco place as well. It's another town centre. I think a lot of players in recent years have forgot that the Crees can train C the bees and they're really good at it as well. Um, something that's coming up, but two share rides. I'm gonna pick up a villager and yeah, I think once once you see that there's gnats on the floor, you shouldn't be out forwards. You should be at home. This village is running back, and uh, we're going to see Major Cooper is tucked in his base. And no, why are you going stable? 
Oh dear God, the the theory, the theory of this player here, Major Cooper going stable in the face of Shane Riders. Um, I, I really like to disagree with that play there from Major Cooper. I do not think that's the premier position of how you want to play this point of view. Um, Can't see. Creed. The thing is, can longbows realistically do with Creed's as well? I, I, I don't know. I mean, the only, only unit can do with both of these at the moment is the minute mana. And that is literally it at the moment. Brit's got nothing. Oh, another field going down. No great coat. It's just been researched. Defensive tower in town center might not be enough. Another field under pressure. And uh, sometimes there's a risk of trying to pull one or two villages back at a time, but actually, sometimes the more sensible is to put everybody in the town centre, protect them. Oh, this is not looking... this is looking tough. Oh, he's just sent in five vill. There's no units on the floor. There's no units being trained. The Shane rides on top of the vills. The Kree trackers are inside. And there's no combat cars. These are just base units at the moment. And the, the Major is under... Humongous power at the moment. Oh, humongous pressure at the moment. We should probably go head back to Elaine Magnusine's follow up cards. He went Nature Treaties into Cemetery Woods. That makes sense because he doesn't want to secure the second Cheyenne. He may be tempted to go into the Bison Tech at some point when he runs out of Inbase Hunt because why walk and have a hunt when you can get one spawned at the town center? So much nicer. Um, doesn't need houses because of, well, Nats are, they could take a zero population. Hasn't got a trading post yet. May want to go for a singular trading post. That might help. He has just potentially sieged one house down a Brit. Siege, the siege of these units are not the greatest, but if you can get a mana house down, that is 81 XP for your, um, which is, well, for you, your sieve. Very, very nice. Four CDBs now being called behind, while the, uh, Kree CDBs of... Still being trained. Okay, we've got the Kree Tracker. Oh, all five Kree CDBs are now fully trained and working. That's good to see. see. Shane's coming from the front side. Still no multipliers versus the cavalry. Um, 21 with a 1.5. It's not a huge amount. You know, Hussar still should technically win that, that fight. But actually, once the upgrades come in and then the extra multiplier versus all cavalry come in, then the Shane start to dominate the fight. Hassar's trying to go for a raid, but it's just five cav in the face of a full-on army. Shane Rider's 6.75 speed. Hassar's at 6.75 speed as well, but potentially here for Minutemen to come in and snare the Huss. The Minuteman call have been made. No great goats just yet. Now, there's a lot of food being built up here. Some, a bit of gold as well. We need the housing to continue more villager production. No one's chopping any wood at the moment for uh, Elaine Magnums. It feels like our kind of... We're starting to like wean like a little bit of a power spike. It's not not seeing that momentum move. Oh my god, the sh the Kree trackers just walked into a base without any cavalry protection, and their in immediate threat of being cleaned up here. Elaine is uh, being uh, ran around by five Hussar units, and it's caused massive casualties on the front line. The Shen Rise are running back to try and support. Yeah, all three. Oh, they're being these are being pulled back to the villagers. Three Shens are trying to deal with all five Hussars and. Elaine Magnum is trying his best to age, it looks like. He's trying best to age, but he's kind of given up the momentum he had. Brit had nothing. There's a moment he had absolutely nothing. Can continue production of Shane Riders. Could have spelt the early GG in his base, especially uh, diving in. But um, the Major has brought himself a bit of breathing space. He's got some... Uh, he's got a decent vill position, 37 vills. The raising on the units has been quite substantial. We have seen some bills on Elaine's side go down. 27 villages. I think he's lost the best part of three regular CDBs. He's still got the five CDBs, but uh, he's only on 23 regular CDBs, and that's with a full CDB shipment. And he's aging up to the next age without sending in the gold, having to send in native combat instead. Very good card. Yeah, not a problem that card, but uh, going for the gold naturally gathered has just basically burned all momentum that Elaine had at that moment in time. Hart was saying, did any of the trackers die there? I don't actually know at that moment. Probably not, to be honest. They had nearly had the same HP as a Hussar. Yeah, they nearly do. 299 as a HP after one upgrade card has been used on them. But uh, soon we're going to get our 
Elite Tex. Interesting, we're going for Cheyenne Fury here ahead, ahead of Elite Cheyenne, but that makes sense mainly versus a pure cavalry army that the Major Cooper's going for. That might actually be a third age tech. Uh, don't quote me on that one, but it has taken some time for a major uh, for Elaine Magnum to research that. But now these Shane Riser are, are essentially unchallenged in the cavalry departments with a um, hand sack. Whoa, hand sack's gone from 1.5 to a th three. A three multiplier? Was that the Elite Cheyenne adding an extra multiplier there on the um, hand cab? I, I would need to check that uh, with some people, but that is pretty bonkers. A 3x base 29, so they've gone from doing 21 with a 1.5 multiplier, which is basically like 25, 26. Now they're doing 90 damage. Essentially 90 damage versus cavalry. That is nutty. That is huge, that is. And now all it needs is a couple of trackers to deal with the musketeers, deal with the goons, and this game is at very ri <laughs> it's nearly at risk of being cleaned up very quickly by just Mage Cooper having the inability to deal with these units. And yeah, these Hussars do 30 attack. Guess what though? The Elite Shane Rise of 464 HP and 90 attack because it's us. Not even close. And it's a nice little micro here with uh, some faster moving Kree trackers. And in they go, the Shanes locking on with the Hussars. We do see 1 plus 20 and a couple more coming in. Shanes on the back ride, back line. They do see some militia men. Could be a decent attack. But so Pikeman gets some good swings on the Shane Riders and Lane Magnus over committed here, waiting for more reinforcements. He's actually sending in a native warriors, which is actually a really good card. Makes sense. It's, it's a, basically a 25% economy card on all your all your resources if you're purely going into native units. And yeah, there's just a couple of these Shane Riders cleaned up after after all the pikemen have gone down. And what thought to be a great exchange there for the for Major has gone back into Elaine's way very quickly. I can, you can see very quickly how every game on this map will soon be a French only with the Shane Riders. And um, Ju maybe Julian is right, saying that the Shane Riders are too strong at the moment. And I don't think it's actually the Shane Rider is the issue. It's this multiplier that they've gone from 1.5 versus all cavalry to 3. 1.5 is manageable. Even like a plus 0.5 multiplier to take it to 2 is a substantial bonus there for the Shane Rider to kind of you know give it a little bit more oomph. It's the French card plus the show and plus the tech. Yes, well, it's the, yeah, all the French cards, but it takes a while for all the French cards to come in, which, you know, I, I accept that is, that is absolutely true. And I think it's the actual. The, the multipliers, any Sith can get these multipliers. Now, uh, the Kree on top of the Pikeman. Uh, Pikes are getting one bang now by the Kree. That's quite awkward. And I, I don't really know how I mean, he does this. He kind of needs to go pure goon pike? Pure. Yeah, well, long birds. Yeah, there's nothing you can do. There's just there's nothing you can do versus this, unfortunately. And we'll be moving on to the next game very quickly. The uh, elite Shane Riders here claiming another victim. I, I I don't see a way, unfortunately, boys. I'm, I'm trying to be as optimistic as possible, but I do not see a way at this moment. There was ways with the China game Julian played versus a, uh, an opponent who went China. I think it's Ungers, and that was quite interesting. We had a bit of. Um, Bayang army shenanigans with the step Kashik, we got uh, Changdao, we've got the skirms. A lot of good stuff coming on at the moment. But here, once the goons get snared, bam, one hit, two hit, three hits. And yeah, the snare comes in and a couple goon kills now. Three goons remain, can't really kill one, and yeah, they're gone. Vil's getting picked off. 32 CB is here for Elaine Magnum. Major Cooper on 40 regular Vil. It's a bit of idle time. But um, the, the follow up here for our French player is just all the more better. Arsenal here for Cav Carras. Likely to be researched already. Let's have a look from the Arsenal. And no, not researched just yet. It's actually quite an expensive tech. 300, 300 gold. So nothing to sniff at. Yeah, the game's called. I don't, I, I don't, I don't begrudge that resign because yeah, once you kind of lose that early game, let it go out of control, then you're not really in a position to come back at any point from there. 
So I accept the resignation there. And we have one at one. One apiece. Benji, who are the players? Great question. This player here, Major Cooper, he's American. He's from the second campaign, and he can train hussars. He's a nice little character, his. And Elaine Magnum. Oh, we all know Elaine Magnum from the first campaign. Oh, the, 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 the bad guy in disguise. He, the person who thinks he's your friend turns out not to be. Those who are our players today. So, uh, oh, oh, if you didn't know, this is an AI tournament. This is computer controlled, all these units. Yeah. Hey. No one sees Grandmaster. Something like that. Yeah, I. It's just Brits not really having something to deal with. Like, I guess it would. I guess it was going pure infantry, but then you might be at risk of being raised to death. So you won't be looking at like a longbow musk dragoon composition. Going hussars here is as British versus Shane Riders is just. It was just a no go. Although there was a nice little counterplay and push out with the Huss and just a lead to all pressure, there was. It didn't achieve anything, and then when fights were being taken, although initially it looked to be in favour of Major Cooper, actually, once the, all of the pikes went down, the couple of Shens just tore through the remaining cavalry, but there's always a cav presence there. And yeah, Longbow's being trained, we're getting picked off, goons and matches of five, but not really enough to win everything. You kind of need to have a massive Dragoon mass, a bit of a spongy line like a pikeman or a musketeer line to block, even if that means free kills there for your Cheyenne. No, free kills for the Cree. Yeah, competition there from Mage Cooper was a little bit wrong. I think a bit more of a turtly wall play might have allowed him to get to a decent economy and a really powerful position in the Fortress Age to then start working on the Nat TPs. Interestingly, once the Nat TPs fall and you control them and delete them and then build your own what does French do now he's, he hasn't got any Nat cards in play he might have a couple of Cav cards he can go into Goon Crassier Skirm but you know that there's a there's a way for this and you could wall the TP you could wall the TP if you wanted to if it comes that much of a problem it's a bit toxic but if you can wall the TP wall the TP if you want to drink some Cav you better see you should wall down <laughs> <laughs> wall up all the trade posts and send ba then research Bastion. <laughs> oh, that would be fun, wouldn't it? Yeah, at the end, these are just, they're just, oh, it's just too good. That's oh, just too good in the end. And I will say Julian's right in that sense. Right, uh, we're going to head over to our scoreboard. Mage Cooper unfortunately losing that game. Elaine Magnum winning that as the French. Move on to the next game, game number three on Manchuria. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. I mean, just, I've just, just been told the next matchup. I'm, I'm not going to say anything about it. It's not some mirror. Oh, Manchuria. I don't think the players have just started the game yet, so there will be a um, the teeniest, the tiniest of interlude as we roll through the brief delay in the replay. Well, well not replay, uh, spectator delay, shall I say, as the game gets started. So uh, we'll put ourselves back on the bangers that is the Age of Empires 2 soundtrack. <laughs> Prince Lewis picked Sim and lost two more games. <laughs> oh, I don't think uh, Simlo has has counted the number of times Brits have been banned by a player or two. So uh, that is kind of skewing the the picks a little bit. And I think it's really tough to see like how good a Civ is just by win loss ratio in a tournament setting with a few players considering different matchups it's 
blind pick somewhat emulates quick search, I guess, but uh, you know, some sieves win matchups, some lose overall. It's a bit different in places. Yeah, it's hard to say. I think Brits is certainly still pretty strong. Didn't see the first game, but this last game was lost because of misplay. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. There's a few viewers went down earlier on. Uh, opening up stable into Shayans was also a bit not great. You know, at times I've defeated Animus by going Berba Caffery when he's been doing like a French semi versus me. It's hilariously high. It's so much fun all the time when that happens. Oh, I've got my uh, order of stuff the wrong way round. God damn it. Right, that, should, that um, alert should pop up. And Dr. Aggressive there with the Prime subscription. Thank you very much. Hope you're enjoying today's uh, cast and show. Sorry, Animus, you need a time out for that comment. Berber camels are not cheap. They're very well designed units. And specialize in killing cavalry, anti cavalry, and skirmishers. And they look pretty because they're camels. I'm joking. You're welcome. You're welcome back. Right, we have caught up with the players, and we are right up with the freshest, the latest gameplay from these two players. We're going to hop into game number three right now on Manchuria. That's enough good bang it, good music. <laughs> Look at that. Elaine Magnum, Major Cooper, Level 1, Otter, Home City, both of them. That's quite funny, that is. Well, I suppose they don't need to practice on the competitive account. They can practice on their main account. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Otto Mirror time on Manchuria. This is game number three. Scores are one apiece. Elaine Magnum spawning to the northeast in the color blue. Major Cooper spawning to the southwest in the color red. Both players diving for the middle of the map, looking for the yaks. We do see... One player going dock, Elaine Magnum going dock. We do see Major Cooper going dock as well. Double dock to start the game off of Manchuria. Both players here declining the trading post opening. Tuck in, boys. We're in for an Otto Water game. And uh, Ottoman Water is a pretty good strategy to go for, I would say. It's a very strong boom potential. And I remember the days playing Ari when Ottomans would go water revolt. No, Aut no go water. And then revolt in O'Higgins. Which is modern day Chilean revolt and spam Imperial Hussars to great effect. So we're going to see quite a bit of that, but uh, it's interesting. One thing I would comment is Elaine Magnum's gone for a defensive dock. Major Cooper's gone for it's a defensive dock, but slightly far forward. Neither players wants to try and drop a dock right in the center of the map. Maybe fearing the ability to try and hold it with Jan, Jan Huss in age two. Animus is saying score question mark. Stereotype saying top right question mark. <laughs> Come on, Animus. I know I know you've got glasses, but you know, you, you do have eyes as well. Have a look. It's one apiece in the moment. We're in the third game. And you have been following the stream right from the start, Animus. Like, pay attention, my friend. Pay attention. Look at the treasures here. We did see Major Cooper pick up 40 wood. I think we did see Lane Magnum pick up 40 wood as well. Thought potentially might have been a big, uh, larger wood treasure in the middle, but it was just a single line. Elaine and Magnum here currently working on uh, a nicer, juicier wood treasure to the north. 75 wood? Oh, it's 80 wood. 
Eight, he would have been picked up here, and that's going to help his fishing boats. I mean, that is another fishing boat and water. That is another uh, villager, so pretty good. I think Major Cooper won the early yak scouting wars. He's got five, or say four, plus a defensive yak here. Meanwhile, Elaine Magnum's only got two in base. Does have one tucked up at the edge of the, edge of the map that can get picked up. Got yak forward. Oh, you can hear what the yak sounds like. Oh, interesting. Well, now you learn something new every day, don't you? We all we all become better people when we learn more things. Elaine, aging up now with the quartermaster, aging up with the woods. Likely to see Major Cooper now aging up with the quartermaster as well. Both players age up at the same time. Shaolin Temple has been discovered by Major Cooper. I'm unlikely to see that one this game. Both players have... Ooh. So Elaine has not got a mosque in base just yet. Major Cooper has got a mosque and a house. Okay. Four fishing boats on the fr front for Major Cooper. Elaine Magnus just trained his fifth fishing boat. So a little bit more eco here for Elaine. Major Cooper here with the XP bonus here from the mosque. I think the mosque early on is going to help greatly. The 0 .8 XP, XP per second really going to come into clutch. Both players here spamming out fishing boats. Does either player know the other player's gone water? Elaine scouting on the map. One fishing boat going across. This is crucial to decide whether he wants to go galleys first or not. Oh, he does it. He's backing out. He's backing out. Mage Cooper, did he see that? He probably has not seen it, actually. He's probably focusing on uh, other stuff. Forward, yeah, he's looking on this uh, treasure. He might have seen it. We'll have to find out, though. Mage Cooper not going for a little scouting party himself. Does have a shipment available. Could be room lots. Could be galleys. Could be galleys. I, mean, I, I think, but, but, well, neither player knows each other's gone water, but I think Elaine knows that Major's gone uh, water because of the lack of the train post. And I think Major will assume that Elaine's gone water as well due to a lack of a train post in the first age. Notice how that wasn't there in age one. Both players are probably hypersensitive to all the minor details this game has to, to happen. House goes down, no mosque just yet, but we do have a train post. Train posts are slightly better. Well, in terms of how it cost to return ratio, probably a mosque is a little bit better than a train post, but uh, uh, a little bit here and there. Stable here for the major a lane going for Rax. I think I would prefer to see defensive stable here from a lane as well. Considering how good the room lots are as well, they, they can kind of win your Cav Wars, kind of win your versus Abus Wars. You've got Minutemen to deal with the Janissaries. So you're pretty def safe with a defensive stable here instead of defensive racks. But both players are looking to kind of win the water. This is, this is where the action is going to uh, lie this game. Three cabins of 700 wood is our shipment progression here for the Major. Elaine does see the three cav actually, so that's quite interesting. To s that was got discovered. You could say good scouting. You could say you could say unlucky scouting, but uh, he knows on the way. Five jams being trained. Villagers is trying to get to the TC. There's a few actually going to get some really dodgy path in with the house. These two, I, I reckon these two animals are going to kill somebody. This is the claim. These two animals are going to kill a villager. Oh, jams come out just in time, but uh, this villagers, this villagers uh, reaching destination F unfortunately, and uh, F in chat for that one gone down. That's a shame. Five Jans couldn't save that one today. Another batch of Jans out on the field. Just moving around, but... Uh... I'll tell you what, no, it's Lane Magnum's not going hard water. He does have galleys, improved fishing, improved warships, frigate. Do see Major Cooper as well with the two guys' war improved warships. Three galleys. I think the three guys is a slight... Slightly, uh, uh, probably slightly stronger than one frigate, especially with the Thurum having the special attack. Uh, certainly not as good as three floats because of how good floats are at other stuff they do. But um, diving in with this Cav play, Neverville goes down, in, out, in, out, shaking it all about, do the hokey cokey. That's what Major's doing, and Lane's down a couple of bills. Major Cooper, 27 villagers. Elaine at 25, down to regular villagers. Well, 
He's got more regular villagers. He sent five vil, but he's certainly down in the fishing boat department here. Major Cooper here having some good play on the water. The build order here from the Major is really good. 700, three Delhi and 70 wood to kind of help everything else going on. But uh, what's, what was the other shipment going? I, I guess it was just three Delhi and 70 wood because he hasn't sent gold. Oh, he has, he has sent gold. Of course, sent, okay, it, it's come through. Yeah, sent gold. I was about to say, like, how else would he age up? But uh, it's quite nice to see the the aggro semi FF. Instead of 5 vil, 700 wood, 700 gold, it's now 3 cav, 700 wood, 700 gold, and put your pressure under opponents. A massive, massive pressure. Artillery foundry here from a lane with cav on the field. That's a, that's a brave play. The fishing boats from a lane still rather limited. No gill nets here. No gill nets here for the Major. I'm disappointed, Major Cooper. I'm expecting more um, economic awareness. 12 fishing boats. This is prime territory to get gill nets. I do, no, no. I do not want to see another fishing boat until you train gill nets. You will get yourself that massive 15% income on food and gold. 15% on 12 fishing boats. That's another... That's another, like, fishing boat and a half, I guess. I guess it is. Fishing boat and a sixth. You know what I mean. It's just so good. It's, it's just too good of a technology to not get at this moment in time. Major Cooper going Abus Gun. And I do see a lot of Ottoman players do Hussar, Abus Gun play. Or should I say Delhi Abus Guns. Because Jans, they're good, but... you got some Super Huss here and Super Skirms in the Abus department. The Jans are good... I, I, do, I do call them Super Musks as well, but they're certainly not as good as Sepoys or Ashigaru Musketeers. They're different. They, they do their job quite nicely in that situation, but uh, the Major himself has got himself into a really strong position. I will say this. He's got himself into a strong position. A guy has come out here from a lane on the age up, and I think Major aged up with four Cav. Aged up with the Cavalry Marshal. I might have got that one completely wrong, but... Uh, Without anything to deal with on water from Major, he's in trouble. And yeah, he's, he's sending a thousand wood, but he hasn't got any wood to build a ship. And he can't send a ship just yet. I, he kind of needs to strike on the land or just raid around trying to distract the APM here from Lane Magnet. Because he's just going to keep marching forward the galley. And yeah, big problems on water now here for Major Cooper. He's entirely idled by just a single age up bonus. Elaine Magnum sends it in nine chance. This is... Uh, I would really like to see the frigate come in because he's, he's, he's seen... He has seen how many fishing boats there are on the water. He sees that... Okay, he's got the galley. He's got the momentum. Now, he can either contain and accept, and accept Major Cooper sending in a frigate or whatever three galleys to defend and come back. Or he can use the tempo to stamp out water completely once and for all. There's an opportunity here. And he's going for steel traps behind, which, you know, spending wood on, on a wall and steel traps is good. But you've got the ability to, to demolish fishing boats and, and just, yeah, okay, there's there's the response to the three fishing boats. And the frigate on the floor could have been here now for a lane magnum. And a, a sea galley and a frigate would have beaten three galleys. And now kiss goodbye your own dock because you're not just defending that. He's staying too fat because he's already given up the water. And I think tactically that's the wrong play here from the Major. Back on land, Jan Abus marching across. <laughs> but we've got Huss, Abus, Cav Archer here. Minutemen defense available. Abus guns picking off, kiting away. And they're going to win the Abus war, I think. Yeah, both have got Vet Abus. So uh, Elaine's losing the land momentum. He's losing water fully as well. This is really awkward to see and now please get yourself your kill nets now that water secure because it's too good to not get right. yeah jesus your your rights to uh, give up water when you see that because there's not too much to protect but i think there's an opportunity for a lane to actually pick more fishing boats up with the opportunity you had the nine Jans have been escorted, have been sitting around waiting to sh shine, but uh, two Falcons on the field, but unfortunately we're about to see how good these room lots are. Oh, they're going to bail out. Really good trade there, actually. The Abus guns went forward and got torn apart by Abus, Jan, Falk. But the economy is looking special now here for 
major. 27 villagers here for Elaine, and they're all regular villagers. Meanwhile, Major Cooper, 34 with 10 fishing boats, so a little bit down on regular vils, but uh, a lot of decent stuff behind. Once again, though, these uh, not quite yet having their gill nets. I'm a sad Harry. I... The thing is, everybody literally is. They treat the market as the holy temple. Every game, you build a market and you click that hunting dogs button without fail. You're like, every game, I must get hunting dogs. That's 10%. That's 10% of like 50 wood, 50 gold. It's, it's very good, but usually when you re research that, you only have like 10, 12 vills on food at that moment in time. Others on gold, a couple on crates, a couple on woods, you know, nothing special. Here, you've got 10, 15% on both food and gold for the same price. Oh, it's good, it's good. Abus defending. Colves out to push away the Falconets, and uh, Elaine, I think, is going to be very smart and just back this. I don't think he wants to fight this. Abus guys are going to move in for a cheeky little snipe on the Colves, but it's not going to happen. Uh, one shot does go on the Falconet. Oh, the bounce shot! The bounce shot! The Falcon! Oh! Good damage there. Can you, can you tee up another one? He might tee up. He's going to tee it! Oh! Oh, big damage! Oh, the Falconet! He gets shot down with a bounce shot. Oh! I, I think it's going to s s survive, but we do see. Um, defensive Minutemen with multipliers versus Janissaries. This is the most broken unit in the game at the moment. There's no reason for Minutemen to have multipliers versus Heavy Infantry. An absolute shocking bit of game bounce there, I think. An unneeded change. The Janissar and Abus somehow defeat the hand gab, but the momentum here for... I think the momentum for Major is still looking pretty decent. More cab being trained, cab shipment being sent behind. CC fires looking pretty good. It's only a couple of jams, remember? Only a couple of jams, and all this is going to get destroyed by the calf from the stable! Oh, my, here we go. Here we go. This Oh, this is going to be a lot of micro here. Good micro. And actually, the uh, Goldfriends are going to come good damage, especially when they're clumped up here. It's, it's worth a trade. Oh, my God. The Goldfriends are coming in, putting some damage. More more huss. And the cab archers behind doing certainly not insignificant damage behind. Remember, even if this trade doesn't go great here for Major, he has economy and... Oh, Lane's getting cleaned up here by the Hussars. Dun, dun, dun. And the last stand of New Istanbul has been uh, seen here, unfortunately. Economy down, military down, score down. I think Elaine Magnum knows that his, this game has been uh, seen to the greatest event. Oh dear. Yep, run these boys back. No, no need to get involved. <laughs> extra free fishing boats in the water as well here for Major Cooper. Like, do not forget this. This is actually quite a lot of extra food being gathered up by these fishing boats. It's certainly not insignificant, but uh, I think the Major just has to be smart and just just close the game out. It's certainly a good lead. It's, you you could argue it's a a throwable lead, like it's it's something he shouldn't really. He's got all his fish boats now on, on whales to support the gold income, preserving the food. There's so much life in the sea behind. Still hasn't got his gill nets. I'm gonna cry, but it's okay. That was some good defensive play. I just felt that, I just felt that the the sea boy shipment there from Elaine Magnum, sea boys into the Falks. Uh, it, it wasn't forward thinking enough. It wasn't right. I'm gonna crush the water, or I'm gonna demolish the land. It, it kind of was waiting for the send the Jans to cover the Falks and the push was really really good. It gave him enough time for Major to kind of think about the defensive play behind this and that was the artillery foundry defensive Colves and they got some good exchanges on the Falks. They they got some good shots. Uh, overall lane did manage to get some good kills of Falcon. It's not the end of the world. But uh, now out comes the Spahis. Five Spahis in the, and the room lots. Or oh, the Delis. Yeah, the thing is, a frigate coming in now, it kind of works, but it doesn't work because three galleys are stronger than one frigate. You can run the, the, the galley around like this. Look at this micro. Like, what? spin to win, spin to win. Like, what on earth can the frigate do? <laughs> the frigate's down to 600 HP. <laughs> He's just got his first kill. Now the frigate's going to go back to, to Noi, but fishing boats in the dock. Yeah, no, that frigate's gone down. And that, unfortunately, is a shipment gone down the toilet. No positive momentum gains from that. And uh, Major himself is now sending cavalry combat. No, but he does not do to see it send two galleys on the water or improved ship combat. 
Animus is like, wow, epic micro. Doc's su boat circling another boat. They're doing the spin to win. Wow. Yeah, you can do that. Frigs are not great uber close combat. So they're, they're, great, they're very great when fish and, when boats are facing each other, but as, as soon as boats start to move in this game, it's really hard to target them and lock on. And to be fair, the galley is literally designed to be a fast moving boat, 10 speed. It is designed to be a very fast uh, moving unit at the expense of less HP. Second dock. <laughs> Second dock for more fishing boats. Still waiting on those gill nets. I'll keep on saying this. I, I, I believe. I believe in the gill nets. Uh, yeah, the, the stream. The stream is a th set to 30 FPS, but it, I think it's the um, overlay program in the background taking up quite a bit of juice on my system. I haven't got the greatest. I got a 1080 GTX and a. Uh, i39k processor i think or something like that maybe i need to uh look into it and the problem i have is uh, i do tend to use um game capture mode which is really good but the game capture is really awkward when you're flicking in between different uh layers i.e going from different programs it doesn't seem to work i think display capture is easiest to move in between maybe i'll change into a, maybe i'll change into a game capture now Take that off. Hope, hopefully this will load up. Come on. No. Is it not loading? Mm. Ah, that's annoying that is. Oh well. Yeah, okay, so, so the quality is 1080. It's not 60 FPS. It's, it's, it is set to less than that because I can't, I can't stream 1080, 60. I haven't got the, the uh, computing power behind that and the... I've got other programs running on currently behind. Also, you got you got Discord, you got the streaming overlay software, you got the game, you got Twitch, you've got um, the, the chats from the um, ESOC streams. You can see your beautiful opinions. Abus guns do move in. Do you see Colvin's on the field? It's interesting here because the Colvin's been trained here from Magnum are only here to deal with the Colvin's on the other side. They're not really on damage output mode. Anti-cav here from Elaine's starting to pick up. Does have decent cav archers. Still near one town center production here from Elaine Magnum. I'm surprised how the economy is somewhat kept in. But the sponsor spy here's connect. They're going to go to town. A decent amount of cav archers. But there's still some good vet Abus guns behind. They're going to connect with the Abus. With anything here. Actually, everything here, the Abus guns counter. The, the cav in the front line are just there for the kind of uh, the icing on top of the cake. The cherry on top of the of the um, muffin, if you, if you may say so. And yeah, the forces of Elaine cut down again with Cav Archer, Abus gun behind, and the Spahis doing their job at the front, tanking. Very, very beautiful there. Gigi's being called. And that's a good game that Major Cooper taking the game. And he returns this series back to 2 1 in a VAT. 2 1, retaining his one score point lead ahead of the first game. <laughs> It's really weird, yeah, mate. I noticed that. I might have to try game capture. Maybe, maybe window capture here is not the not the uh, method to do it. But uh, I might have to give some time to warm up in between uh, stream overlay and the thing. It's quite all good. I will note that down and cherry on the muff. Shut up, lion! I was, I, was, I was babbling on for words. Military unit population. The first fight there went. You could see that Major Cooper was in trouble, but the defensive um, cav being trained and the five batch of cav from the town centre, the town centre fire on top of predominantly Abus guns. A couple of jams went down, but uh, once the jams went down, the whole army got cleaned and basically rebuilt from the scratch. I'm very impressed that Elaine was able to remass. I, I didn't think it was possible. I, I have no idea how essentially the lines have closed back in. Maybe that was the raid on the water, the frigate being sent in the idling, but there's they really didn't feel like a reason why the economy is, should have been closed. Major should have had that lead considerably. If you look at the village population, a consistent gap between the villages. He did lose quite a few on that push, but there's a consistent gap. Oh, Major Cooper here not getting his village attack from the mosque. Um, That's naughty, that is. Oh, that is, that's massive. 
That's massive. Not trained Vils for about two minutes. Ooh. And then his Vils on the water weren't upgraded at all. So actually, the economy is very close. Really, really close. And probably better, slightly better there for Elaine at the end. That's all good. Hmm. Didn't catch that one. So maybe it's Lionheart who's uh, playing. Because uh, so Lionheart always forgets that Musk attack. And it always gets himself housed and idled. Oh. We will move back into the stream overlay. And uh, I'll sort out the game capture for the next game. You yeah, guys, any any comments on like tech quality, let me know. I can, I can deal with it. If, if no one says something, I, I don't know. Because I'm busy minding my own business here casting. But beautiful. Remember, the winner of this series moves on to the semi-finals. I don't actually... It feels a bit of shame that this is only a best of five, but I suppose a best of five is still good enough to uh, let people know but like um, who's going to be the better out of the two players. Always feels tight. Like When it's 2-1, you're thinking, ah, oh, you can't really quite separate who's going to be the victor of this best of five series. Our next game is going to be on Manchuria as well, so that's going to be an interesting one. Oh, oh, baby. Hmm. 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 <gasps> yeah. Oh, no. Sorry, boy. Sorry. Oh, I'm, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a China Mirror on Kamchatka. And that actually makes a lot of sense. I do like uh, the Chinese Mirror on the Kamchatka. TP's goats. Kind of longish map. Defensible. It works in China's favour quite a lot, actually. I will say that. Pretty good. Right, I'm going to hop into the game and see if I can get uh, the next game ready to go. The game is not quite published yet. I think they're just starting it and we'll catch them in once the game jump past the first minute. Ah, but stereotype, you know, it's hidden picks. These, play these players don't know the other players' sieve, so they can't, they can't anticipate it. I think... I think either player thinks the other player's going to go Germany here. I think this might be a German, a good Germany map. So uh, China into it is kind of all right. I think they think China does pretty well into Germany these days. But uh, China is certainly doing very strong these times. I'll certainly comment a bit more on the Chinese uh, theory was in the game. I think Otto is better than Brit. I think it's got. I think Ottoman's gone past the point where they're, they're categorically better than Brit. Um, I think China H two versus Brit H two is close. Uh, both sides have ways to win it. I think if China lets Brit boom to three and China goes through themselves, I think Brit has just so much mass to kind of collapse on China early. Their H three, so I think I think that matchup's very H two focused. But yeah, both of these sieves have ways to beat Brit these days, but uh, it's not an easy matchup by any stretch of the imagination. Not even close. I might, might stream later tonight. I'm gonna have some, I think I'll have some food first. But I might get back on the plane afterwards. I, I'm on holiday tomorrow again, actually. But I've, I've got 
I feel that tomorrow I should be doing some more productive things on a Monday instead of playing games, but uh, we'll see how that goes. It's not quite Christmas yet. It is December, but it's not quite there. I think we'll be having a small delay here, boys. Uh, somebody has picked the wrong map, it seems like, which is quite funny. Uh, I suppose that saves us hopping into the game and having to be that awkward commentator and goes, hmm, welcome to this map. This isn't this isn't a map, Paul. What's going on? Speaking about maps, um, Elaine Magnum here, Band Indonesia, and Major Cooper, Ban in Bengal. Wait, was it? It was Bengal the third no TP map in this series, potentially? Man, this, this tournament host loves his no TP maps. I suppose he wants a tournament favouring series like uh, Aztec Age 2, India, Russia, uh, Dutch, Brits to some extent as well. There's a lot of good series up for grabs in that situation. Um, I think it's politely discouraged stereotype. Now, let, let's say out of the eight players, only two players turn up to watch. You can kind of get a bit of an assumption that, oh, hang on a minute. Um, they're, they're there because they're... Well, no. Okay, yeah, okay. If a player turns up and starts chatting to the chat, then you categorically know it's not them playing because this is a live series. The other two players have got other stuff to do. So let's say, I don't know, for example, Azank turned up to the chat and said, yo, what's up, my cow elephants? We'll be like, oh, hey, Az. <gasps> hang on a minute. You're not playing the game at the moment. So can't quite see the uh, game just yet. We'll be with you as soon as possible. Uh, interesting, makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. Who else has had a fantastic weekend? I've had a good one. <laughs> Jesus Christ, how long does it take to reload a map? Come on, come on, my friends, come on. Actually, might be, this, this might give me a good opportunity now to get into a, get into um, uh, what is it? Game capture. So I'm gonna go from window capture to game capture. So hopefully, if I refresh it, loads up. Yeah, there we go. This, hopefully, this is a little bit smoother. You know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna just remove window capture from my uh, list of things I can use. So I just, so I just don't keep on making this mistake. But game captures always. I always need to like have something changing, refreshing for it to see it.
Bram Hoke saying somehow I like, but I don't know who the players are. But I also no I noticed less hype. To no, 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 Brett, no, Brett. It's more hype. It's more hype. The whole point is that you don't know. It's, it's, it's drives the speculation of who it could be. I must admit, last time when Hen Cup was on, I, 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 I had a good idea who was who quite early on. I think. I remember that Prince of Kabul took like five minutes to load into a game. So I'm like, right, that's Prince of Kabul straight away. And I think I found out some players pretty well. Sheckler went quite far in that tournament. I think he was actually part of the Hidden Cup, which is a strange one. He did really, really well. We have found Elaine Magnum's game. Let me refresh and we'll hop straight in. Kimmel. Do -do 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 -do. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to game number four. We're on Cam Chatska, the spiritual home of ESOC competition and esports. This map was originally developed by Garger, I believe. We certainly serve this community very well. And every tournament since, I think we've found our ways back onto this great map. The map's uh, kind of geographically located. Is it East Cam Cam Chatska region? It's like the most southern eastern point of Russia in that peninsula. It's very interesting. The map itself here, we, we have a China mirror between these two players. Elaine spawns to the southeast in the color blue. Major Cooper spawns to the northwest in the color red. Really interesting. There's goats in the middle. Um, four goats, two apiece. There are goats on the side. There's a mid-map trading line, which have both players have defensive train posts. And you just assume that most players should be going for a trading post straight off the bat on this map. Especially Mage Cooper to the north side who can definitely get the first pass of experience, but has actually decided to go for a single village in base and maybe he's trying to do something funky with, with other stuff going on. I'm very curious straight away to see what the, what the mage is up to. I think he's just going for a two village opening, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but it might work for a specific reason. I'll let you know. Oh dear god, the the, the back herd. I'll let you know why I think this is an interesting point and maybe why this might work in the Chinese mirror. But uh, yeah, the map design, it's, it's, it's one of those maps where it feels awkward to play on. It's Nothing is safe, nothing's comfortable. You have some awkward hunts to herd in. You do have two in-base mines, but afterwards your mine opportunities are very, very restricted. It's kind of easy scoutable, this map. It's a bit of bit wallable. You can drop docks down for that and make some boats, but they are pond bound, so they haven't got free reign. There's a lot of good things in this map. It's a very interesting map. It's a, it also feels like this map has sections as well instead of just one large open battlefield. And it's actually a rather large map considering it's 1v1 uh, situation. Oh, Major Cooper here losing his disciple. The lane trades in his... Um, Duper the pet monkey for the disciple. Now actually trading off again the disciple for Duper pet monkey. Both players trading off their, <laughs> their disposable units. But overall, Wang Lang here having so much more HP than <laughs> Tian Yuan. I think Mike's was called Tian Yuan. So uh, no, I do not want to see this one go down, unfortunately. Everybody has their default Explorer skins because these are fresh accounts sponsored by Microsoft. So we thank them for that as well. But um, yeah, Major Cooper here going for two village opening. I find that interesting. Potentially how this may work for Major Cooper is he can go for Northern Refugees, 700 gold, 700 wood, and go for a traditional FF play here, but having that extra villager to help assist and get his infrastructure down on the 700 wood. Meanwhile here, Elaine Magnum going for the more modern day Chinese build. TP into village for a two villager shipment. Decline two vills, going straight for tea leaves, so just going for Russian consulate. Cheaper villagers, faster villager train rate is the base bonus of this. Faster exp export generation as well, but uh, slower age up. And if people have been noticing, this is Julian's build order, build order left, right and centre. He loves opening tea leaves first and not sending villagers behind, which... 
adds an, I'm not a massive fan of. I, I, I admit and I appreciate that going Teeny's first means that your blockhouse is ready as soon as you get to the third age, but we're at four minutes and we're not really close to aging up. We're looking at more like a five minute age up time here for Elaine, which is just, it's just too slow is the problem. It's, it's a slow tempo, but has a bigger return payback in the second third age because you can save a shipment for to squeeze in the sandwich of woods or you can kind of go have an extra military shipment early on. It's it's a really interesting play that Elaine's gone for. So both players having similar ideas with different ways of going about it. Major Cooper's chopping in transition for a t later TP, but I feel that for the price of one villager and the village itself, you could have just had the extra trading post early and then maybe chop for the village in transition. It's a it's six of one, half the dozen the other. I find it's very interesting these although we'd like to think that China build orders have been fully worked out, there are still variations which persist and each have their own minute little differences, bonuses and advantages, which I think which makes this matchup a little bit interesting. Although when it gets to fighting, it's likely to be both players training Enna's batches and calf batches, but uh, sending stuff like redcoats, Changdaos, skirmishers, maybe a cheeky Manchu pop in there somewhere if somebody feels very brave to stack up the coin for it. But uh, let's, go, let's look at Major Cooper. The time is 5 minutes 30. The gold's nearly on the floor. His food count's nowhere near. He spent his time in transition chopping wood, not, not getting the food for the age up. His age up will be late. We look at Elaine Magnums, going 700 gold into 700 wood. He has the time to squeeze in 700 wood because he saved the shipment. The gold's on the floor. Wait, how's this gold on before before uh, Major Cooper's? I have no idea what's going on. Uh, Major Cooper's should be on the floor a lot sooner, and he should be aging up as fast as possible now. He should have resources ready to go, but uh, I think the chopping the... Um... Well, that was loud. I think chopping for the villagers slowed him down quite a bit there for the train post, but he kind of does need the TP, which makes the two build build a bit, village build a bit interesting. When I play China, I'd probably go for the hybrid. I'd probably go for two villas first into tea leads Russian consulate go for the porcelain tower and skip the sandwich of wood and have the tower get your wood shipment but I have been a bit of a convert squeezing into the extra wood as well kind of works both players dropping down their cons their towers well there are uh, wonders porcelain tower here for major cooper a lane magnum behind in base going for the porcelain tower now the thing is you should be looking to age up as china at the 7.15 mark, 7.20, that's your part-time. And with goats in this map, and you know, with decent treasures, you should be able to reach that time most of the times. But uh, I think we'll be having some slightly delayed here. Still another 35 seconds of construction, so 7.35 here for Elaine. Major Cooper looking to be at a similar time as well. Another 35 seconds. He's going to be even slower age up. I've... I've not, I don't actually know what's going wrong with this build order, apart from chopping for the trading post in transition. He must have had the gold ready as he aged. Maybe he didn't prioritize age up as fast enough, but you can get up faster than this. You could be up now with that tower providing you eight villager economy straight away, investing back into your economy. And yes, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it, building back a better economy. Yeah, there you go. Getting some. British political slogans in there at the same time. How beautiful. So yeah, Major Cooper going for the classic build order here. Seven uh, villagers, double village, 700 gold, 700 wood into first unit shipment on the age up here. Lane Magnum going for the new style age up. Manages to, the thing is, the difference is he's managed to squeeze in 700 wood as well as already having a blockhouse, already having a concert down for free. There's so much extra stuff that Elaine has as a result. He's getting some warning down, he's got a Ford Village, he's got a Market Tech, he's working through Market Techs, and there's the unit shipment on the floor. So as positions go, look at the score. Elaine Magnum is in the lead, I would say, and I'd arguably say that's a justified lead considering the amount of stuff he has on the board at this moment in time. Yes, this, this tower will be on woods catching up, but uh, will be a little way. Oh, Cooper going here for some German consulate play instead of British. So I don't think he's going to go for any intervention play, but he's starting to go through the trickles. First, getting Catalyst behind. That's basically a 3 vil tech there. 
But market text behind looking pretty good. Look at the gold there. That is um That is civil servants. That is That's all the market text I think that is. Well not all of them. It's 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 double tier gold and civil servants, I believe. So yeah. A commie for both players, bit bit of wall in. Skirm's gonna see the cav and luckily that wall was there, because otherwise cav were looking to eat some more eat all the skirmishes up for breakfast. This kind of means that Elaine Magnum can just go more into the skirm cap um skirm swords. I know he's in cav now, but uh, ideally you do want double carded skirm sword armies. Um, that's that's where China's really good, but I, you don't actually need repelling volume this matchup because China very rarely go into dragoons, as in Keshek's Manchus. It's not you don't need to trade Manchu card for repelling volley. It's not uber. Yeah, so yeah, I guess I guess Cav and uh, double face armor is pretty good. We do see Redcoat's intervention uh, coming out here from Elaine. A great card that is from the British consulate. So we, we've gone. We, we see lots of variations here. We even seen gold coming in behind here from Major Cooper. I don't believe he's sneaking in the, the industrial age up behind us. Or he, he, you know, he might be. I think he is. He's got a lot of ghosts to eat as well. They're nearly fully fattened, so this is going to help him push, but he's also pushing at the same time. This is kind of... I like the push at the same time. He's, he doesn't have to commit. He sees what's on the floor. He sees the red coats. He sees the investment into age three units. All he has to do is to kind of get out as much as he can. He should probably start pull tricking his skirms to keep out of the way. Picks up a Chukanu. Does lose quite a bit there, but it's not the end of the world. But Cav on the floor here from Elaine pushing forward. I think he's realised what's going on. I think he feels like he doesn't want to push just yet. He's just kind of get himself sorted. It's just yeah, he's sorting his stuff out. Let's say metaphorically, he's sorting his stealth out. Beautiful Cav raid here from Major Cooper. It's just one iron flail, but the splash attack he can actually get a couple vills. He might need to mark this away from the vills to avoid a punch, but one goes down. Potentially two goes down. I think it just, just will be just a two here. But that is certainly worthwhile. That is a that was a tasty raid, as they may say so. Aging up with this skirmisher wander here for Major Cooper. Only on one trading post. Yeah, he's he sent three shipments in um, this age, which kind of oh it's part of me, that's the wrong player. He does have a shipment ready to go, and he sent two shipments, yes. I was about to say, if he sent three shipments that aged up, he wouldn't have something to go on the age up. He does have... Um, skirm Swords, Cav, Flying Crows. There's something he hasn't... Oh, he hasn't... Okay, he hasn't got Emperor's Own Army, which is the massive uh, Arquebusier and... and um, Handwater army, but I don't think he needs it here, so it's not the end of the world. Kind of needs to send in Changdaos urgently, or a Cav. Uh, Minutemen being called would be very nice as well. Just like full commit defense here. The Explorer's got so much HP. Get him involved, get fighting. We need to get we need to get going. Somebody on the front line. There's a full retreat there, but I think Mitch could have just turned around and, and accepted the engagement there a little bit. An upgrade's here for either player for the cavalry. Uh, Musk is the only H3, remember? Soon we should be expecting some at least H4 double sunders, but I suppose that's the problem going constant trickles is actually you don't have the units from it. You've got text, but you know, text don't upgrade, they just stay as it is, so no dops in this fight. The Calvary Exchange in. Um Tian Yan has damn but has done his job. Quite a lot of cav remaining here from Lane Magnum, but the cav batch has just been sent here by a major group. I was expecting Chang Dao's, but cav is actually beautiful in this situation. Thanks a lot to Skirm Fire and the Skirm behind our protectors. And 22 disciplined arquebusiers versus what's from Elaine at Magman. Major Cooper's certainly got the upper hand in his position. Also, that all that experience at that moment in time just helps that shipment curve here for a, a Major Cooper push forward. He has the Porcelain Tower still on wood. Changed it over to gold. A couple of people chopping wood. Now getting honoured arquebusiers. Very nice. Sending an arquebusier shipment behind. So he will have the best part about 35. No, more than that. 38. 38 Archibus years. Probably look likely to train... Uh, I kind of want to train Cav now. I, you've got enough skirms. You need to invest in other stuff because there's other risks. But uh, Elaine's thinking, right, I need to age up. And he's going to age up himself with the Confucian Academy. The thing is, he's actually got some red cuts in here, which I know there's on an Archibus years, but there's a lot of export ready to go if he needs to. And there's 
These units are very, very strong. 34 Vils of Elaine Magnum Mage Coupon. 35. How, like, how does that happen? I suppose that, that's the Vil Raid over here. Making a lasting effect. Mark Tech's probably slightly edging it for Elaine. Considering that Major is really focused on the Age Up's next age. But he's also got 0.72 on the gold. His, his wood's looking pretty good. First tier and civil servants. Or maybe that's Imperial Bureaucracy's hunting Vil is looking pretty decent. Hunt looking a bit challenging at the moment in time, but moving on to four positions, so it's all going to be fine in the end. You know what? The German techs might be tipping this one in the end, actually. If the Redcoats actually peel off, the Redcoats are amazing raiding units. Like they're even better than cavalry. It sounds weird, but we've got 36 attack musketeers. And they're the same speed as a villager. Just dump all of them on top of a gold pile and you can get some massive kills. We do see Honoured Chang Dao is being researched here by Major Cooper behind this. Elaine Magnum is going... No, 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 no. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't go Manchu now. What? Mm, I mean, at least go Rattan Shields. Like, Rattan Shields could do some massive damage versus... There's not too much anti-cab here from the Major. Yes, he does have Honor Chang Daos, but you've got a lot of skirmish yourself. You can pick this off. Rattans can clap, but what does... What do Manchu do here? Yes, they can actually pick off the Meat Jammers. You can send them here, get some a good pick off. But it's not helping you in the skirm fight. 30 Archipulsiers for Elaine. And uh, Mitch Cooper likes to be up to like 45. Oh, 53. <laughs> 53 Archibaldiers, because why not have 53 Archibaldiers? Ah, first, first Flying Crow, second Flying Crow, and third Flying Crow coming out. Interesting. Oh, missing the trick there, the Manchu. These cab were begging to get cleaned up from this forward village. Absolutely begging to be killed. And, uh... Major Cooper's survived that one. This is a risky play. There's no need to be sieging this with Cav. That's okay. Ooh, this is this is gonna be this is gonna be a tasty, tasty move, I think. Skirm's moving forward. I know I have noticed that because uh, Major Cooper is later to this age, he hasn't actually got any flying crows trained or shipped in the moment, and then Three, 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 three flying crows are very hard to deal with at the moment here from Elaine's point of view. He does have a decent amount of cav and man to just dive, to like just dive in and go for it. But there's a, oh, we've got honoured flail, uh, Misha Hammers behind. It's still just been flails, but cav actually being trained. Major Cooper's still got enough army here. Double pump um, units. He's got one cav batch trained, might go a second. And we do see the plus nines everywhere from the Flying Crows. What what does Magnum do here? Uh, let's look at Magnum's deck. He does have... Oh, he, does. he also doesn't have Emperor's own army. He has Manchurian Combat. Does have, obviously, Western Reforms. Oh, I kind of feel like... like why, why do players have Mandarin Duck Squad in their deck? While missing cards out like Everglorious Victory or Emperor's Own. Uh, you're missing that. Is you, you have got no Colve answer in this stage. Maybe go Russia and try and get Colves out. But I know that Elaine Magnum, he's got some export. I, he kind of kind of does need to bite the button and switch. Oh, cavalry! Cavalry on the Manchu! On, on the Flying Crows, but you got to pull back out. But there's only disciplined units. We do see Honored Cavalry here from Major Cooper diving in. So many skirms. And all the Flying Crows, a huge splash damage. And... This is exactly the place where Major Cooper wants to fight in the trees. These flying crows have protected the cavern, not jumping in. Changdos are making their way to the front line, but swiftly executed, and the cavalry is still relatively fresh to the battle. They're not getting in on top, and the flying crows taking some great trades. This is a this is a fight you can only dream of for Major Cooper. He's, he's currently leading the series two one, so this could be game and match at this moment in time. More honored cavalry behind the honored iron flails. Uh, is is crucial here. These are the tank cavalry. These are the anti skirm cavalry, and this is what's gonna get the um, army snared nicely in range of the skirms and the flying crows. But so you can see this. So Lane Magnum's panicking. He's sending flying crows. He's training mortars, but they're not even honoured hand mortars. They're they're not great at this time in the game. 
the Siege of the Summer Palace is going to be huge in terms of the XP that will provide. Um, Major Cooper once he gets this down. Okay, three. Three Flancos versus three. But more Cav is on the way. This is like the weirdest, the most weirdest artillery fight that I've ever seen. But um, Mortars come out. They will only tickle the um, Flying Crows. Yeah, not a lot of damage here. Still a lot of HP remaining. I, you know what? The position is not as bad as you think. That He's clearly edging the artillery fight at the moment. Still has some decent anti-cav options in the field. Still has all nine man shoes. Somehow, they are still alive. And Major Cooper sees the score lead. He sees the potential to throw. And he's like, yeah, no, not having that. I'm backing off. He's gone for another two heavy cannons, which is certainly you know, a great card, but I can't... F oh, he has not got Western Reforms. Why would you have Rattan Shields in your deck? Why would you have Standard Army HP in your deck and not having Western Army Reforms? That's 8% combat on every single unit you have in the game. The Villagers, the Explorers, the Artillery, everything. Ah, uh, that's a, that is a card you need, but... Here we're going for the 220 pop Z move and the raid. Oh, this town center is in trouble. Oh, I'm building it with full villagers. Uh, five seconds. It'll go up just about, but at what cost? A lot of vills gone in there. He must have lost the best part of six vills to say the least, but at least he's got the up going. But uh, what this says is the carries out position. They're going... Oh, Morville's been, potentially being raided over here, but uh, Major Cooper is not having any of this. He's just going to dive in. Nice wall in there from Elaine. Magnum behind, going to buy a time, and Major Cooper's just going to run straight into the walls. There's more villagers potentially up for grabs. They're going to pull back. These villas are somehow alive. They could have been cleaned big time by Elaine. And the siege of the Great Chinese Wall is on. Changdao's just... I just don't send the Chang Daos in at this point. They're just going to get clean. They're just not doing anything. <laughs> Chang, Chang Daos, lol. So much cavalry. The Cavs out of position. There's no Manchu. There's no cavalry to block. And honoured Meteors and honoured Flyers just cutting through everything. And that's even before the artillery exchanges happen. The Flying Crows, but oh, the cavalry. Oh dear. A wooden wall is not this massive cavalry. This doesn't matter though. That doesn't matter at all. That is a huge, decisive victory in terms of military for Major Cooper. Pressing his advantage on. And with this amount of siege, you can just tear down the porcelain, the town centre, and the confusion. Don't go back. Don't go back. Keep marching forward. Keep marching forward. You've got yourself in a great position. And Major Cooper's going for even more. Okay, he's actually going for villagers and goats. Which I is actually a really bad card. That's only, that's only eight vills at the stage of the game. It's not really what you want. Goods are quite nice. Yeah. Territory army, maybe? Oh, double face armor. Yeah, send that. Send that card. That's a great card to send at this moment in time. Oh, our first rice paddy on the floor is always a bit of an awkward sign. Mage Cooper is saying this nice and slowly, nice and carefully. Don't want to do anything too stupid here, as they might say. More hand mortars being trains. Two flying crows being sent. At least they're honoured uh, hand mortars now. Oh, they, the artillery exchange is going already in Major Cooper's favour. Cab move forward, baiting out everything there from Elaine. There's a lot of stuff. Actually, what has Major Cooper got his console? I think he might be back on the Brit consulate. I don't want to look. It's not important, actually. I'm on Mother's Nature's point of view. Major Cooper, double cab batch, does have shipments. It's got so many resources, but the cab goes straight onto the hand mortars and flying crow. And there's still four crows here. Massive building siege, and the frontline cab crushing as well. It's the cavalry here from China winning the fight. It's so good in terms of the damage. And I think that's going to be all Richie right, unfortunately. Elaine Magnum's provides a great entertaining series, and yet the GG has been called. Major Cooper, we salute you. Marches on to the next round, winning the series three to one. Two mirrors being won actually back to back. Otto mirror and Chai's mirror. So that's quite a nice way to kind of end that series there from um, Major's point of view. Elaine Magnum, there. interesting build order there with the Chinese. I thought kind of early game he started to get some decent advantage uh, with his position. One thing I think you. Potentially could do, which could be interesting, is 
instead of selling 700 woods here from me from a lane magnus point of view let's go for the 300 export uh, where you have more export there from russian and then you can switch to germany very cheaply there for the trickles if you want to play that way you've already got the blockhouse for the wood concept for the wood porcelain tower gets in your woods i always feel that the 700 wood might be a bit overkill in that situation but it means you can get your market text and never have to uh, chop for a long time it's interesting a load of damage units here interesting maybe h4 transcendence uh, wanda could be huge could be utterly huge that's like a restoration god power for um you age mythology fans out there potential ah exciting game that was i i really enjoyed that game that was a fun game to watch interesting build was diversions between players major cooper going for the more classic build order as it is known to be from china uh while elaine magnum's going for the more recent uh new look chinese build order both have strengths both have weaknesses both these build orders, well, okay, this build order is highly susceptible to an H2 rush. This build order has durability versus an H2 rush, let's say. So that's another key difference between the two builds if you're kind of wanting to decide and pick your own build for a Chinese game yourself. And I certainly encourage you to play China the Ladder. They're relatively simple to play, straightforward in terms of strategy. And, um, yeah, if you, if you have great micro, there's lots of units you can get extract so much value from. So it's a, certainly a, a a more fun sieve than a... <laughs> I played a game of Sweden recently. Most boring sieve going. Sweden Brits are just there. It's just... Yeah, not, not a massive fan of those. Let's look at the line. Looking pretty good. Major Cooper did lose some Vills on that push. Lost quite a lot, actually, in the end. Not having the two Vills from the village also kind of hurts Elaine Magnum. But for some reason, he's... Oh, yeah, the two village and the town centre. That's a three vill shipment. Three Vills, massive. Like, if you look at the area between... That's a huge difference in terms of economy. Yes, Elaine has a lot of infrastructure already there from the consulate. Sending wood as well, kind of as pivot shipment. I don't know. The jury's out. I, I think you. I think you can do three. I think you can do two vills and a consulate. Try. It kind of works. The fight in um, Major Cooper's base early on actually went pretty decently. Can't remember where this fight took place, but it was certainly very, very good. Ah, uh, that would have been over here. Yeah, no, it's in the trees, wasn't it? It's was in the trees, man. There's the trees everywhere. The Manchu was an interesting play from Elaine Magnum. I, I I like to think that, on reflection, that probably wasn't the greatest card to have sent at that point. Especially when that gold could be invested into guard upgrades and then the shipment could be... Yes, but I think he wanted a shipment being sent in transition and a shipment ready to go on the age up. So the maximum amount of stuff on the shipments there and then to defend himself at that point. But, yeah, it kind of works. Heartshake, Ezoc TV, what is the announcement? Hey, good question. I have a special announcement there for you, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, I don't know what it is myself. I'll have a quick look at the peak, but I think we are done. Yeah, I think we're done. Yeah, no, we're all good. I think we are. So, uh, take us back to the uh, overlay for the time being, just to round this off proceedings. Our final score in the China Mirror. Major Cooper th winning three, Elaine Magnum currently one, and that's our series. Right, let me find something. I'm going to I'm gonna have to get a display capture, aren't I? Yeah. Display capture. Um, existing capture one. Doesn't really matter. Right, cool. Ladies and gentlemen, ESOC are going to host a new tournament, I believe. I, I, need to, I, need to, <laughs> I need to see it. I need to see it before. I actually comment what it, what it is because I could just get it completely wrong. Um, where is I'm I'm, I'm typing in this link, but it's not letting me do it. Uh, do it via Discord. Then click on the link. Will that work instead? New topic. B. Right. I believe this potentially might be hidden. It might be out now already, but if you haven't seen, dun 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 dun. dun it's the ESOC AE3 World Cup. Hey! 
ESOC in partnership with the Real Clan are happy to announce the AO3 World Cup, the AO3 World Cup, a 3v3 team team tournament will feature eight teams from, from four regions of the world, North America, Latina America, Europe and Africa, oh, okay, we'll put it together, and Asia Oceania, battling it out to bring glory to the nations. Sign-ups are now open, and you can sign up for your region here. For the official rules, make sure to check out this post. The event will start in 2023 and be streamed live on ESOC TV at Royal Clan A3. May the best nations win. Um, so, congratulations to Europe, being led the way by Germany and France. Thank you for watching the A3 World Cup, and we'll see you in the tournament afterwards. <laughs> um, I, I assume you sign up as an individual and you, be, and, and you and then you'll be put into a team. I believe is how it's going to be. Sign now open. You can sign up. Okay, click. Uh, no, don't. I don't. I don't want to report abuse. <laughs> no, report abuse. What's going on here? Type of abuse. <laughs> Nudity. <laughs> just imagine nudity in the sign-up sheet. Okay, um, let me uh, let me just try and copy this link into my Google One. That should be fine. God damn it, technology. Right, that's my email address. Please don't spam it. I should not have done that. It's not the end of the world. Sp send me beautiful mail. Yes, my name is Harrison, and it is surname Goomba. What's your current Steam name? Enter it in Discord and choose the region you wish to represent. This can be either current location or bird birthright. Oh, we could have Izad playing for Peru. Oh, spicy. If, example, if you're in North America and want to play for East Asia or Shadow, you will be playing on the East Asian time zone. You might have to play at an inopportune time, such as late night, early morning, during work hours. Which Izan do you want to represent? I want to represent Latina South America. Team Elo. Uh, well, boys, you better get on your uh, team Elo now. You better get get that Elo going up. It looks like it's being going to be picked up by um, team Elo. But boys, boys, no, no, it's it's Kumba, as in Kumbaya, my lord. Okay, listen to me, Kumbaya, my lord, Kumbaya. Okay, now go back. Now say it back to me. There you go. What's going on? V one Elo applicable doesn't that matter? So um, yeah, maybe this t t tournament might actually be padded out by f f Royal Clan stacked players because if your team Elo is not high enough, well you're not getting in, boys. So you better hit that um, ranked queue very very quickly. Um, actually, let's have a quick look at the uh, AOE three ranked queue while we're at it. Not not queue, but the um, ladder, team ladder. We have. Seven apples at a 28.72 rating. Wow, that's incredible. This player must be incredible. Wow, the Zal clan are so good. A 28.72. This player must be the greatest god there is. So sign him up. No, no, he doesn't even need to sign up. He's already in. He's that good. He's amazing. Uh, well, gimmick. Uh, work all? I guess they play together. Kex Apocalypse, yeah, no, nah, you're not, you're not, top, you're not fifth in the world. Chef to these, sorry, mate, you're not sixth from the world. Stay table. Does Dan the Alex still play re regularly? Yeah, Snow good. Cletus, I swear Cletus gets carried by Snow and the other vets person. Or is it Metfis gets carried by these two? During these boys only play together and basically carry each other. Can you see? Yeah, so lose a lot. Nah, I mean, you're yeah, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Ravnak 16th, so he won't get into his team. He's he's 16th in the world. That's not good enough. Chef Juno Kasser. No, I. 14.89. Okay, he's only played two wins, two two wins and two losses. Uh, I've no. This this ladder is messed. But if it's gonna be done by Team Elo, you better get grinding because on page six here, Ajiv, yet yeah, you're not getting in. Lazarus, you're not getting in. Doppelsonna, you're not getting in. Where's a big boy? I need to see a big boy here just to prove a point. Let's, let's, let's pretend this is Robot. Yeah, Robot, you're not getting in. Maybe page five. Well, let's see someone too sick. Uh, yeah, Jamie is uh, down there. 
Anyway, essentially, I'm sure there might be a bit of a balance, but um, yeah, get your team leader up. I think team elo has been used as a factor for picking teams. <laughs> well, hi, I love to see Harris go through just shitting on everyone. <laughs> Oh, but come on. Can somebody, t somebody cannot argue me that the Seven Apples is not the greatest player this game's ever seen. Like, it's like, it's like when Jail used to say that he was a genuine top 10 player. And I'm like, no, Jail, you're not a genuine top 10 player. He's like, no, I don't, yeah, I'm amazing at team. I have a great knowledge of the team. Like, well, you, it is good. It is good. But, but there are better players out there. That's funny. Anyway. That's probably it. The time we get some food and we need to raid an after party. Or somewhere. Some good games. Good jam that was. Are we gonna see are we gonna see the German Vets clan back in action? Snow Cleaves and Met Feasts back on the grind. Could do. Uh <laughs> look at this raid list. We got potentially raid Caverna. Well, uh, me, and, me and Caverna are all right, but not like, the greatest. Eagle Eyes Maloney, well, if you play a No Rush 20 game with him, you're likely to get absolutely um, just destroyed by some cheese. If you not, if you don't have the greatest cheese ability, then you're going to get nuked by like some Japan Daimyo running for your base, dropping out 20 Samurais and 20 Mortars. And Alvaro, who, well, DQ'd from the tournament, so... Uh, Lion? <laughs> Can we get can we get a lion stream going on? <laughs> who is the seven apple? I have no idea who the seven apples is, but uh, let's look at his one v one rating. He's from the he's from the Zion clan. Thirteen oh three one v one rating. Whoop 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 whoop. Whoa, twenty one games, seventeen losses. He's played quite a lot of treaty actually. Undefeated in the deathmatch environment. Okay, that's, that's fair enough, actually. I respect that. The Seven Apples is probably a better player than I am. So, banter aside, I'll, I'm excited to see this player sign up and see how he performs. I mean, 28-72, you're first pick in the tournament. You have to be. What a talented player. I know, he's, he's, he's amazing. He's, he's, he's a fantastic player and a quality uh, for the thing. Tad saying, Harrison, I promise he is a quality player. Yep, Apples must be leading the way in terms of the team ELO, and I look forward to watching his games on the ladder, and maybe we, we can make a little casted series of following the greatest player ever, the Seven Apples, and a 28-72 ELO. Oh my god, that's beautiful. Right. Um, did uh, Josh ever sort out the raid? No. Well, that makes my job easier. I can't raid anybody, so... Raid. No, nope, doesn't work. No, nope, doesn't work. All right, cool. Well, I don't think that's gonna be it. Can't raid anybody, so uh, naturally go off and choose your next streamer by the power of community and enjoy the rest of tonight's um, games. I might be on some chats with the boys and other discords maybe we might see a Du Bois stream later on I'll leave you to it but uh, yes back to the kind of uh, get the page up just to announce it have a look on AOE 3 uh, I've already lost the fucking page where is it no I do not want to report abuse you know no one's no one's abusing me just yet. But uh, when I start playing multiple on the ladder, oh, I get abused hard. So I'm now, yeah. Cool. Right, uh, I'll probably just leave on the way for a bit. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you later. I'll end the stream in about two minutes' time, so you can kind of go off and do what you like. Ciao, ciao.